Welcome everyone. Among other things this week, like getting Rust and Cargo to bootstrap and all the daily commercial software development things of us, I also spend some extra time further refining this GCC DOS stuff that we have been doing the other months. And the most interested was this naked attribute that I've never used before and that is new in GCC 7. Because as you have seen in one of the earlier episodes regarding this, we have here an interrupt service routine that is called buy and hardware interrupt. And for this to work, we cannot use a regular C function because this would have a different calling convention and use the stack slightly differently. So I came up with this kind of trickery here. I basically not use this regular... Oh, wait a second, this is... This was a previous code that I also published in the meantime. And you can see here I used this underscore function that I didn't use. I even had to mark it used, otherwise the compiler would not even generate it as it appeared unused. And then I defined my own global ISR timer function, this time with also underscore that I actually used in the code. And this worked around this issue of C-generated function prologues. The epilogue would not be used anyway because we return manually here with an irate interrupt return. And as you can see, this new naked attribute avoids quite some hassle here manually fiddling around in each interrupt vector that you would use like this. Let's revert back to the... So again, back to the new code, which as you can see does not require any of this manually fiddling. And this makes writing more than one interrupt service routine obviously much more simple and nicer. And we can look at this. I have here the disassembly with object dump. I have this in the make file that is published here, this object dump and so on. So we have here old disassembly versus new disassembly. You can see the first startup code is calling the main function and here you already see that it's slightly smaller. The old code would call to B5E and the new code calls to B5A. So this saves us a couple of bytes there. And it also changes a few offsets and such on the way to this function, obviously. And the function then comes here. So the old code would move here the stack pointer and things like that. And actually, I think in theory, this may be everything that is generated here for the... Actually, although it looks a little bit much for some reason, but whatever. And this should be everything of this function prolog because this push al was the first thing that we had here push a. So everything before this would have been stuff that we would not really want it. And um, let's check push al move csx. Here's csx. As you can see, it's also nice to save some more bytes of stuff you're not using. Obviously all the offsets after this changes, so we have enormous block of code that the diff is showing to go away, which actually is not going away, it's just with slightly different offsets now here. The new code directly starts with push al as we wanted. And we can also see this in the assembler output of the compiler that I also have here with gcc minus s. And in this diff we can see what is being removed here is this code that you have seen. And by the way, I'm not really sure why is this. So what's being removed is this CFI start proc with this stack pointer and such. And instead we have here this global ISR timer function directly and obviously much nicer to have this cleaned up. However, I should warn you that the main page says that for this naked attribute, the specified function will not have prolog epilog sequences generated by the compiler only basic ASM statements can safely be included in naked functions. And while using extended ASM or a mixture of basic ASM and C code may appear to work, they cannot be dependent upon to work reliably and are not supported. So just that you are warned about this. And um, for me in this use case, it appears to work so far. And also CLang does not support this. So Clang indeed really does not want to process C code in this naked functions. Maybe I open a bug report there and ask if they could try to remove this implementation limitation um, if we are lucky. This is not the only thing that I've done. In the earlier code, I had the jump to the main function here and had a command that this needs to come first. And I also said that more fancy hood program optimizations may 
shuffle this around and destroy the setup. And I now have changed this also. This is the old code that I was talking about. And it's obviously also not very nice to have this to do should be done differently, must come first thing here. So what I've done now is I now have this in the DOS header with a special section attribute. So I attribute this here section start, also make it used because for this attribute I needed a function here. Not sure if you can somehow trick this together without a function, but I, in my opinion it doesn't work. And also we have only assembly in here, so maybe this is more supported than the other. And also used, I think without the use the compiler did not output this function. So we now have a start function. And what I do to have this come first is, I think I changed here our comld, our linker script. So this is new, the start section. We still have the setup to output and link to address 100 hex. And the only change is that now we have the start section here first and then the text section. And so far as I can see this works beautifully. So we only need this in the DOS header, include this everywhere or put it somewhere else if you want to, but I find this quite convenient. And I could remove this from all the many examples that I started in the meantime. So we also don't have this code duplication anymore. Other changes include that many of these examples run very long and could not be stopped or did not even exit cleanly because I always have run this in DOSBox and running this on real hardware, I figured it's a little bit inconvenient to either press the reset button or wait very long to, for this demo to finish. So now I also added here some keyboard query function. You know, here, keyboard hit. I think this was probably similar to some DOS name. So I now check for keyboard hit in many of the examples to make this more convenient. And this is still not all. I also, well, beside some little CPU info thing just for the fun of it, outputting the CPU ID, but that is rather trivial beside providing you the assembly glue for that. I also even started an SVGA info program that outputs all the VESA BIOS extended modes here. This was actually not that trivial. For this, I had to add here not only new definitions to VGA, I now have here not only huge definitions for mode info block and such and SVGA calls. The most tricky part was the strings. So to output here strings, you need to peel out some segment and offset parts of these far pointers. That is obviously not super convenient for our real mode running GCC that has no notion of segmented offset stuff. And uh, also I first had this VBE infrastructure a little bit wrong. So that was actually a little bit extra work to debug why this was not working when also all the structures were off by some bytes. But now I also have here some segment and offset helper to peel these parts of the far pointer out and correctly output here these strings and structures of this SVGA extended VESA modes. And to show you this, this is also mostly tested on real hardware and this box. And yeah, also I created here even more demos that are all open source. You find this on my Patreon page. So if you want to support all those efforts that I spend on education material and video production and open source stuff and documentation, you can also join this Patreon to get early access and notifications of stuff I'm doing. And image keyboard layout is this? The Joy of International Keyboard Layouts. That indeed works. So we now have the first VGA is testing this mode X with multi-plane access at a time. The hello world is an example that I did very early with this plasma and stuff, some combined things. I know of also rather stupid, quick and dirty FPU airplane flight when I hacked on an international flight when I had some spare time in some five minutes. That kind of works for some demo. I also in the meantime put there some more sophisticated international university sort of random number, random generator code for testing, just for testing and for you to use. Then I have this two sound demos also with interrupt service routine. I have this Unreal mode pointer where we retain a protected mode pointer for full for gigabyte linear addressing. And I have an Unreal reduced SX demo because it wasn't working on real hardware and I needed something more simple to debug. And here's the CPU ID. And so CPU ID is 
outputting here genuine Intel. On QEMO and real hardware, this outputs slightly more. Um, of course, we could output there all the bits if we wanted of all the features. And Unreal SX is just doing some protected mode, linear pointer access to the text mode. So the SVGA info outputs all the SVGA modes. And what was rather tricky is this far pointer string for you to have a demonstration how this far pointer fiddling works if you would want to use this in more advanced demos. And the full Unreal demo was SVGA linear addressed to the linear mapped PCI address space of SVGA modes and this also should query a keyboard here. Yeah. So you should be able to exit the demos now also without waiting all the reset pin and such. And just for the fun, for example, some things got more advanced. The CPU ID, for example, to make this easy without fiddling around here manually, the CPU ID string is directly in the 32-bit processor registers, which we save to 32-bit variables. And to output this without fiddling, I thought it's kind of neat to have some more advanced formatting. So I started to implement some of this formatting. However, this is rather fragile. So obviously only very basic stuff works here. So what this is doing is writing four bytes inside the 32-bit variable to screen. And you can take a look at this in libc standard IO and precision. So I now have here some rather root code for formatting the precision and I also prepared for the this. However, not all formatting is using this. Um, it's still rather compact here, obviously. Only a few, few lines here using this. Um, now, now be pretty usable, a pretty neat base if you want to write more advanced stuff. And I will also sure continue another month to implement even more details in this and hardware stuff to teach direct hardware access. Oh, probably should stop. Did we? I hope I didn't get... Uh, got in the runs, I hope. Uh, I hope we didn't distort audio. I probably should not record on a CPU limited tablet, kind of 15 watt Intel CPU. <clears throat> I hope not too much audio was buffer on the run there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share, like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon for all the next videos to come.